to startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Welcome, everybody. This is Joe from Startuprad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Welcome to another interview in our media partnership with Frankfurt Forward. This time, we do have the pleasure to have the startup of the month, August here with us and I do have Tom who is the CEO and co-founder of Wingcopter. Welcome. Hey, thanks uh, for having me here. Completely my pleasure. We may tell the audience if you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button as well as the bell. And if you like those interviews, you can support us on Patreon. That said, this is the second attempt of an interview between you and us because you're a Ryan Mind based startup. And um, at the time I was really, really starting out with the video, I was still using one camcorder and that thing actually completely burned through and burned through our first interview. So this is actually the second interview and it's completely my pleasure to welcome you. We are talking. I remember pretty well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I actually felt really sorry, but we were super busy at that time and we couldn't repeat. Now we have the second chance. So let's go. I believe in second chances. Um, that said, we are talking drones today because you guys are a drone startup. But I've, I've been stalking you a little bit on your LinkedIn profile and actually there is not a lot to tell. So can you tell us a little bit about you, about the person, what you did before and how you ended up with drones? I mean, drone startups are not very popular, but there are some around, but it's not the intention when you grow up, you want to be firefighter or something like this, but not a drone entrepreneur. What what did drive you into this direction? Okay, so basically, um, uh, multiple questions. So, okay, when I when I grew up, I, I was I was actually hoping to become like really when I was small in kindergarten, I wanted to become a pyrotechnician. <laughs> so I had this kind of crazy thought to really make big fireworks, uh, probably, and hopefully we do this in the in the right way uh, with our startup, like hopefully uh, in a good in a good sense, uh, not burning it up, but really making something huge. Um, so yeah, it, it changed a lot. I mean, by by now I ended up uh, we are manufacturing and and also providing services on drones or basically operation drone operations, and yeah, we manufacture really high-end technology, um, so this is totally different from what I dreamed up in my in my yeah, kindergarten times. However, I'm, I'm, I'm still, yeah, I'm excited. It's, it's it's big fun, and I think we are really successful in what we are doing. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe you have to repeat your question. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't worry. Every, everything's fine. Um, you studied, I assume, engineering at TU Darmstadt? No, no, no. This is my co-founder. So I'm, I'm really not an engineer. That's why it's also like for me, that's why it's a little crazy also that I ended up in this position uh, running now a, a, a company with really, really capable engineers without being an engineer myself. So, um, I mean, we I, I basically started uh, with looking back what I, what I did in the past. I started with things like product design, communication design. Mm, I went into filmmaking. I learned how to direct films, camera all these creative things um, that was like half of my life it was like full of creative stuff I did uh, then I started at some point working with drones and uh, th this is when I met a really good engineer called uh, yeah, Jonathan Hesselbart who is now my co-founder one of my two co-founders um, so he actually yeah he basically is the brain behind the technology so he really invented the wingcopter and I at the time we met, I actually had the dream to build something which is not there, which I couldn't, you know, use um, um, or buy for my for my. Um, I had a drone startup. I have to I have to say this. So I studied film, but at some point it turned out into film uh, like aerial filming. So I used drones uh, to to do some films, and um, I was really frustrated with the technology. You couldn't buy really capable drones with long flight time and 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 all this. So. Uh, it, it came out of frustration that I really wanted to uh, create a new drone. Also, I had the wish to maybe even sit inside the drone at some point because I always had these kind of yeah 
visions of yeah can can i not sit inside a, a drone would that be possible that was the time there were no drone taxis really like by now you find a lot uh, uh in 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 production or, or not, not in production but uh, different startups who work on this idea uh, uh, back in the days it wasn't really there um and um yeah so we we basically when I met Jonathan, we spoke about the, the man drones. However, he showed me the prototypes he already had created and it was super impressive. So he had this vertical takeoff drone which can tilt the rotors and fly on a very long range, super efficient. And this was just what I was dreaming about, like a drone which is capable of, of taking off everywhere, but but really delivering like good flight time and carrying payloads from uh, over long ranges. Um, yeah, and seeing this drone really made me happy and I, and I, I kind of, Told him that I would love to start a, a company with him uh, to to take this kind of prototype he had into uh, uh, yeah sh shifting it into becoming a real product and then starting selling it and scaling it step by step and we actually did this. So basically, um, when we talk about wing copter, there the, there is a reason for the word wing in the word. So it's similar to vertical takeoff planes is that about right um so for wing copter mm, looking at the name it's a combination of two things so for sure it's a wing and uh, so wing system um it comes from the fixed wings so um and then there's multi-copters which most of you know i guess it's the the, the drone with the four rotors or eight rotors uh, vertical takeoff always hovering uh, they use a lot of energy so the combination of both makes really much sense. Um, it's actually, it's actually you combine like the, the this kind of capability to to hover everywhere, to take off on the smallest spaces. However, then once and this is what what Jonathan's great idea was to really have the same propulsion system for both modes. So you can tilt the rotors, and it becomes like a, a fixed wing system, which in w w within seconds. So. Um, by tilting the rotors and or, or also attaching wings to the system, you really have a drone which can then like fly like a you know like uh, these kind of normal aircrafts with with one or two propellers, and yeah. Um, for everybody who's watching this right now, we'll be playing a little bit of footage from your uh, YouTube channel for the drones. For everybody who is listening, just to the audio podcast, Google something like a V twenty two. Osprey, you're producing more or less a much smaller version of it, right? Exactly. Um, Jonathan's idea, like he started 2009, 2010, so really early and, and uh, a few years before we met. Um, so Jonathan actually wanted to, with a friend, uh, he wanted to build an Osprey, which is this big military aircraft with, which, uh, with, with tilting rotors as well, but only two which is pretty hard to steer. And also it costs uh, so much in development, like billions. Um, so so basically, um, yeah, he, he wanted to build this and then realized why not using four rotors like a multicopter? Why not using drone technology, which is just upcoming um, and, and combining it with the idea of this kind of tilt rotor mechanism? Mm, so that's what he prototyped, a very easy way, like styrofoam uh, prototype. So yeah. Um, this is basically how everything started in 2010. And then over the next years, he built different prototypes, um, um, like 15 prototypes, 15, 16 prototypes. Uh, um, he kept advancing his, his concept into, into a real, real um, capable drone, which at that time there was no, like, no model like this on the market. Um, yeah, so this is basically the background, how Jonathan, uh, yeah, because of an Osprey model, he wanted to improve. He, he basically ended up to, to design something totally new and he was able to patent it. So this kind of tilt rotor technology is patented, which is a good foundation for our startup. I see, I see, I see, see. Very interesting story. Um, am I assuming rightly that this tilt rotor drone um, is actually better like in in reaching longer distances than uh the multi the multi rotor drone you just described before yeah yeah exactly so um maybe how, how do i explain it easy so you have the again the multicopter can really take off virtually virtu vertically 
um, which is super helpful because you can start everywhere. You don't need a runway. You don't need. Um, there are even complex systems to bring, especially wing drones in the air. Like there's uh, there are drones which are they get accelerated by a catapult and then they yeah they, you have to catch them with a net from the sky because they cannot easily land. So you always need for for the the multicopter is easy, it can just take off. However, it uses lots of energy. For the fixed wing systems, you normally need a runway, a catapult, lots of infrastructure to, to get it uh, off the ground. Uh, by combining these uh, benefits like a vertical takeoff uh, or the hovering capability, however, very efficient uh, and energy saving forward flight by transitioning the drone smoothly into a um, a fixed wing system after the vertical takeoff. This is the perfect combination to yeah, enable range, but also to enable um, really robust flight um, characteristics. So the wing copter, the, this kind of, um, um, how can I say, yeah, tilt rotor technology is really able to even fly in har harsh wind conditions. So we can fly up to 90 kilometer wind speed. Um, we can, okay, now for all the, American listeners uh, in, in miles per hour, but uh, I, I have to trans 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 how to say uh, how to say to to shift that. But but anyway, it's very strong in winds. It's uh, it's really capable, um, and and therefore Wingcopter is pretty unique. Um, yeah, yeah, fifty five miles. Okay, thanks for that. Um, yeah, so wind speed, basically. This is something uh, not many drones can resist uh, or, or be able to still operate in this kind of harsh conditions. Um, and this is due to the pivoting rotors. So the rotors are actually balancing the drone, so it's always stable. Um, we may add, because I just realized I had that advantage. I had it in my hand. It's very light and it's very small. But when we talk about a V-22 Osprey, people are thinking like really big ass machines. But actually, you you produce um a drone that actually would fit into a mid-sized refrigerator, something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's... um. Maybe I have to say that also the background from Jonathan is um, glider engineering. So beside university, uh, in a part that his parents also were already in, like they are um, um, instructors, flight instructors. His father is already, um, or he, his father is teaching at the university in Switzerland on the lightweight construction. So Jonathan is basically he grew up with with aviation and he grew up. Uh, building like model aircrafts where lightweight is everything so it's definitely the opposite of Nospray which is super heavy um, and and uses lots of energy to accelerate uh, and, and and or basically to take off and and fly so the idea is really um, to have a yeah an electric uh, electric drone which has to be super lightweight and extremely efficient in terms not just on the flight characteristics but also on using the energy um, and yeah it's an all-electric system also an important thing to say because we this is also part of uh, the idea of wingcopter to to really improve like to have a good footprint in, in terms of environmental um, yeah, protection or, or really uh, not adding up to the um, to the whole um, yeah environmental or climate um, yeah, um, temperature decrease, um, uh, increase, sorry, how can I say that? Not to have any bad things coming out of the drone, <laughs> like any, you know, with helicopters, they, they use so much fuel. Uh, I have hard times to finish sentence right now in this interview, I just realized, but I basically want to say that uh, an electric system is much more uh, sensible. Uh, and I think since we are entering a new decade or new age with these kind of technologies, uh, by the way, I think with with drones we are uh, at the beginning where, for example, cars were when they when they were invented. So we are really in the early days, really pioneering here. And I think in the next couple of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you will see crazy improvements in in the drone space and crazy new innovations and also um, basically um, yeah totally new markets which we we didn't even think about yet. And for sure, Wingcopter wants to be uh, leading in this and we keep innovating. So the, the technology we have, we constantly improve. So right now we are working already on the next generation and we have already in mind the next three to four generations of the Wingcopter. Uh, we just go step by step because yeah, we, we the, the one we have right now is already pretty perfect for many applications. So we can already sell. We bootstrapped our startup by, by selling. So we are really already successful in just 
building and selling the drones we have. However, we know what's what's needed next. Many people would say, mm, nice, a drone startup. But actually, you guys already have, for example, on your YouTube channel, which we'll also link in the show notes below, um, you have already some applications, like really interesting stuff, delivering, um, let me quickly have a look, delivering vaccines in Vanatu, which is an island in, in the Pacific Ocean, uh, DHL medical delivery in Tanzania in Africa. So you guys are really uh, going for the time sensitive, important stuff, right? Yep. Um, I mean, this is this is also going going back to the vision of Wayne Copter. So we want to create sustainable and efficient drone solutions, uh, which really improve and save lives. So this is something we we really look at um, while we while we develop technology. So our technology should be used uh, for good. And um, so therefore, we also decided not to go for military drones. So we are not working in that space. We are not providing our technology to to military applications, which we received a lot lots of uh, requests at the beginning. Until we stated on our website that we don't uh, don't follow up to these uh, opportunities, because um, money wise it's interesting market, but for us it's it's nothing we want to see our wing copters flying for. Um, so our wing copters should um, should really like benefit society and and um, yeah actually mankind. So we, we think um, by delivering, for example, vaccines, as you mentioned, our project um, with UNICEF, we, we have been on this Pacific island. Um, actually, it's an island state. It's 80 islands. Um, and also, sorry, I have to correct you. And, and please correct me as well. I, I already start making mistakes here by <laughs> trying to make a good English interview uh, while being a, a German native speaker. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm struggling also a little bit. It's called Vanuvatu. Which is tricky, uh, but Vanuatu actually it's 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 a great place because um, you have you have such a like it looks like a, a paradise basically full of jungle and palm trees and beaches and uh, so really really nice really really friendly people also some kind of of still tribe uh, structure so you you might know um, you might have seen these pictures of people jumping with the like the the natural rope from from some towers and this is basically happening in Vanuatu. So a wonderful island, wonderful people. However, um, because of there are no roads and no infrastructure, really, um, they really struggle to deliver things quickly. So looking at vaccine delivery for children, uh, UNICEF is working uh, in Vanuatu and they deliver together with the Ministry of Health. They deliver vaccines to villages, which are really hard to reach. And um, so the, the workers from the Ministry of Health uh, or the UNICEF workers, whoever needed to walk uh, to the village needed roughly seven hours uh, to reach a village walking through this really dense jungle um, and, and having no roads and not really yeah, a great access. So if you imagine this situation and you use a wing copter to deliver the same uh, payload, so we could deliver 50 vaccines uh, with one flight, up to 50 children vaccines with one flight. You can imagine this can really, really help when we fly there in five minutes. We, and we actually invented not just the tilt rotor technology, but we keep, as I said, we keep innovating. So we also designed a winch mechanism which lowers the package accurately uh, at the final destination. So we fly out there to the village or from one base station. So actually we deliver to 19 villages from one station with, uh, with our drone technology. So the drone takes off vertically, tilts the rotors, transition within seconds, it flies out to the village 20, 30, 40, 50 kilometers, however the range was. Um, uh, actually, we had some specific radius of operation, and within this radius, we could reach all the different villages uh, on demand. So whenever a nurse called us, we did the takeoff, we put the, uh, the vaccines into the drone, drone took off, it was flying out there, and then it was hovering above the village. And uh, by doing so, you could really drop the package without even, for example, kill children. When they see a drone, they get excited, they run to the drone, they want to see it flying. So it would be a little bit critical to land beyond visual line of sight. So without seeing the drone far away, 20, 30 kilometer away, landing in a village, it can, technically it's possible. And we did the same things in Tanzania with DHL, for example. However, there was the request was bi-directional delivery delivery for for vaccines it's really just one way so therefore we could hover without you know hurting anyone just 
staying in the air, dropping the package by a rope, t turning around and flying all the way back. So we were able to really send the drone in all directions on demand whenever there was um, a, a nurse running into a stock out. She could just call us and we did this for six months and really improved the supply chain and proved that drones make total sense to reduce waiting time for patients uh, and to avoid stock outs. My sincere apologies to all the people of Vanuatu. Really sorry about that. Um, I confused the islands there. Um, that said, we are talking about like applications in the Pacific Ocean in Africa. Um, are you also currently working on applications here in Germany, for example? Yeah, so we actually have uh, we have just a achieved a really, really great step um, looking at uh, flying drones in Germany. So you have to imagine worldwide, there is still a lot of uh, like regulatory, which is good. We, we actually welcome if the drone space will be more regular, like more regulated. Um, why? Because our drones are industrial drones. So we are not building the toys for just everyone to have fun. So we really build drones to achieve, um, um, like to accelerate complex work tasks or to improve, you know, data gathering or package delivery, logistics or whatever. So we basically have this industrial drone, which, which if once there are lots of rules, we can On, and already we design it towards these rules, which are upcoming. However, since they are still implemented and, and not in every country in the world, it's allowed to fly. Also, same for Germany. You have, it, like, within the visual field, it's okay to fly a drone up to a certain uh, weight and uh, a certain size. However, with our drones, they are quite, I mean, they are still pretty lightweight, but um, roughly um, 13, 13, 14 LBS. Um, on payload and then uh, even even more the drone itself. So it's it's quite quite some 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 piece of drone and and you cannot just easy fly it. And also in Germany, what's what's not allowed, for example, is to to really fly um, over 20, 30, 40 miles. So what we actually or kilometers. So what we actually do is um, we went through a risk analysis. We figured out uh, a right client, which was at this uh, at this last project. It was Merck, a big pharma company in Germany. And we, we also found a very sensible use case. So there are laboratory uh, laboratory samples which get um, like, like basically they are designed in one village or one city and in another city they get uh, analyzed. So in between there's a car going. So it's called Gernsheim and Darmstadt where we, where we work and, and uh, where we are building up our startup. So um, as we were part of the Merck Accelerator, we had really good access to Merck. Um, actually, thanks for that, Merck Accelerator, as we, we met there. Super, super interesting accelerator, really helpful. They helped us over more than a year uh, with space and also with some funding without equity. So really, really uh, a great chance for us to grow. And yeah, and through that connection, we could talk uh, with them about their supply chain and realize we could improve this by using a drone flying from Gernsheim, which is 26 kilometers um, roughly away from, from the main facility where the analytics takes place. So we actually enabled, and this was quite revolutionary. Why? Because we, we enabled a drone flight beyond visual line of sight, which was crossing highways, power lines, rivers, um, like all these critical infrastructures you are normally not allowed um, these days to fly over. For sure, in future, we imagine a future where, where at Wingcopter, where we see thousands of drones flying around for all different applications. So at some point, and this is uh, at some point we we will have this, uh, and also this is why we welcome regulatory um, approaches to really, yeah, make a regulated sky for drones possible. However, in these days it's not there. So your question to 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 ask if we had operations in Germany, yes, already successful. For example, with Merck, we were one of the first people succeeding with beyond visual line of sight flights, even basically commercial flights because of yeah carrying these kind of uh, uh, payloads. However, we are not on a daily operation. This is what we are looking into right now. How can we uh, build up commercial so-called BV loss flights beyond visual line of sight flights uh, here in Germany and in the rest of the world? We, ha we had uh, several countries now we gain permission to really fly beyond visual line of sight. However, in Germany, we are not on a daily basis operating yet. Yeah. Um, that brings us a little bit towards the end because I was wondering, how are you guys financed? Yeah. So concerning finance, um, I mean, we were lucky that we had this kind of really capable drone technology 
in, in, in a time like 2015, we started really building it uh, basically like a product. So using carbon fiber, glass fiber. Um, so it became like much more matured than what it was in the years before. Even the technology was already great what Jonathan invented. However, it was a styrofoam drone, not really an industrial grade um, tool. Uh, once we had this, we could start selling. So the first years until 2019, end of 2019, we basically bootstrapped all the way. We sold drones one after the other by selling a drone for a, a price which is uh, normal for the drone industry, for the industrial drone industry. However, it was still uh, enough and, and uh, or high enough for us to fund uh, new employments and all this. So by selling a drone, it really made an impact on growing the company. So the minute we sold a drone, we could employ a new person. And, and that's how we became uh, a team of 35 people roughly. Um, and that was the time we basically met um, a multifamily office. We got an introduction um, through PwC and they, they showed us, hey, there's a multifamily office which is run by Germans called Corcam, based in Singapore, but German management. And you might just want to talk to them. They are uh, in, already invested into two other drone startups. And this could be a good fit and added value because they have great connections in Singapore, USA and, and so, so on so far. So we, we met them and we realized these, these guys are great, very friendly, very, um, yeah, very, um, I mean, supportive and so so we realized maybe now it's the time because before that since we were able to sell since we generated revenue on our own we didn't really have the need or even not the wish to really let investors join too early because normally when you let them join too early the the money they they bring in is not that big and also the percentage they will get for that not so big money will be a lot so it's not worth it most of the time to take in too early investors if you can self-finance your startup so, but at that time we realized speed is also super important that we really become a market leader in this space. So we, we wanted to actually take some, some um, venture capital um, into the company. So we agreed with them on, on a good deal. I would say, uh, looking back, it was a, 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 the right decision. We could also restructure our company to make it really investment ready. So we, we kind of, you know, the, when you're a startup and you bootstrap on your own, you kind of, you know, be super capital efficient and sometimes this is not always the best. So we, we basically restructured everything in a way that we can also take in bigger funds and bigger, bigger investors uh, in the next round. So we are lucky to even now have introductions and great discussions about what's next. Uh, and I think we, we did it right. We first, yeah prepared everything with revenue and now we are taking in more and more capital to to go for the vision. I mean, I, I told you before that we, we want to, you know, scale the drone, scale the startup step by step. And that big vision we have seeing thousands of wing cop that are flying everywhere for all kinds of application from small to really big. This is something which will be really capital intense. And we look for investors with with long term thinking who, who believe in in like aviation grade technology, like really efficient technology we create and also in, into our innovative spirit as well as into our humanitarian spirit because we are not just like for profit. For sure, we are a company which wants to, you know, make that kind of exponential growth in revenue. However, we still really want to see many, many lives improved and, and lots of social change. Uh, for example, we are now, we just won a 1.5 million award, actually 3 million uh, euro divided by two because we, we partnered up with UNICEF to educate people on drones. So we are now starting uh, basically a drone school uh, or an educational program on how to teach people who never touched before the drone space and therefore they would be not able to participate in a billion dollar market which is now growing like we enable kids for example in malawi like we are looking now at malawi rwanda and some other african countries we already worked in now how to educate young people and even elderly so we want to i, I think about the multi-family like or multi-generation concept where from young to old, everyone can participate in this drone space with Wingcopter and help building up an ecosystem in these countries where, you know, there is no car manufacturer in Africa right now, uh, apart from Volkswagen and Rwanda, which is very small and more like a, a showcase factory. But I would say we could bring drone technology in, into places, Latin America and Asia and in Africa, where there you couldn't imagine this right now, but training the right people getting a team together which is capable on, on participating in this billion dollar markets, which is power line inspection, pipeline inspection, railway, highway inspection, all long range applications where Wingcopter is perfect for, as well as for sure, delivery of medical stuff, 
but also not just vaccine, blood, uh, laboratory samples, but also parcels, which we now partnered up with UPS, as you might know. We have this big, uh, interesting deal with UPS to, de to develop now their new fleet for America and beyond. So we are really designing a new drone specifically for parcel delivery. And at some point, you can even use it probably to deliver food. And uh, not just in, in developing countries, but also in all other countries in the world, because delivering blood is a problem everywhere. Delivering food, food is needed everywhere. So I think you can make people participate in this huge market, get job opportunities. And this is something we look for. So we really want to make a social change with our technology by educating people and also letting people work with our technology to enable totally new uh, applications and therefore enable a better life for themselves. And maybe even paying for the education uh, or, or the education of their children because they have some income. I see. And this, this interview will set a new record for the fewest participation of me in the interview, which is totally fine. I love people who have a lot to say. Talking about a lot to say, we're getting towards the end of this interview with the, with the notable interruption of both of your kids <laughs> stepping in, which we'll have to cut out. Um, nonetheless, very entertaining, but, um, Going a little bit back to our introduction, um, Frankfurt Forward, you are the startup of the month. Frankfurt Forward, you're based in Darmstadt, which is pretty close to Frankfurt in the Rhein-Main area. What does Frankfurt and the Rhein-Main area mean for you while you're still headquartered here? I mean, first of all, we are really proud to be selected as a startup of the month. I think it's, a, it's an honor. And um, I can say that this region is really... I just realized this in the in the last weeks and months that that what what how lucky we are to be here. Um, before in the last years, especially during the time of fundraising, I I said to myself, oh, we we should have been in Silicon Valley somewhere, or we should have been somewhere in China, or it, it's just maybe not the right place here to really raise funds to really you know be recognized as one of the leading uh, technology manufacturers. Um, I mean, we are still small, but we want to grow something really huge. And I, I was thinking we might be at the wrong place. However, these days I realize how much supportive the local community is, how much uh, people like Wingcopter and want it to succeed. So wherever we go, people are super happy to meet us and super supportive. Already now we built out uh, an image here in this region. So people, yeah, again, they really like us. And in addition, I see now also politicians to start really reaching out to us Uh, offering help, asking for, for example, a plot uh, they can give us to build a factory or to to really expand the, the company. And also in terms of funding, now we get offers, which are super interesting. So I'm hoping that um, in the next couple of months, there might be some updates on this. But but really, we have great talks to, to, to local people, politicians, but also other players in the space, like other corporates, like Merck, for example, which helped us a lot, a really big lot uh, to, to succeed. And And I'm just really proud to be here. I think my, my whole team is really happy. We also survived the Corona crisis uh, in, in a quite good way because on the one side, the need for autonomous technologies is growing. And I think everyone understands that technology with less human interaction is, is kind of needed for, for many um, different applications. So on the one side, we're lucky now with this crisis also to be here in this region and still be able to work, uh, not shutting down everything, not suffering from that crisis. Um, even, yeah, we are in home office, but that's the only measure we took. Um, so, yeah, we are happy in this situation, but also overall, I would say I'm, I'm proud to be here in Hessen. And, yeah, we, we, we love to build out this new technology in a region where it hasn't been done before. And I think we are, we are leading also in terms of how we will manufacture it and all this and how we will scale it. And I think at some point, um, Yeah, maybe Germany will be proud of what we built here. And then we can make also Germany. Um, um, yeah, we can represent Germany in the world. And I think this is good. Uh, I think, yeah, um, Silicon Valley has already a lot of great things to show. I think for Hessen, we can we can improve. So I think we, we, we will be part on improving this. Great last words. Thank you very much for the interview. It was It will surely set the record for one of the longest recordings we've done. It will surely set the record for the most words spoken <laughs> within this time. But nonetheless, it was a great pleasure having you as a guest. Thank you for making the time on a Saturday for this recording. Um, I hope to see you guys succeed and I hope you'll come back uh, maybe next year when there's more to tell. Thank you very much. It was just a pleasure having you as a guest, Tom. 
thank you very much and then thanks for listening also to these lots of words and i hope you just feel that this is passion and we love what we do and sorry for being this excited but uh, yeah happy to be here and hopefully we meet again here that's all folks Bye. find more news streams events and interviews at www.startuprad.io remember sharing is caring